I'm Tim Ventura, and we're joined today by Lieutenant General Steve Quast, who retired from service in 2019 as the commander of the Air Education and Training Command, where he was responsible for training over 293,000 students a year. Steve is a decorated veteran with over 650 combat flight hours and a 33-year career in the Air Force with over 30 awards and decorations, including the Air Force Distinguished Service Medal, Defense Superior Service Medal, Legion of Merit, and the Bronze Star. He joins us today to discuss his new role as the CEO of Skycorp and how his organization is working to transform the space industry by streamlining logistics. Steve, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. And again, as always, thank you for your remarkable career of service. Well, thank you. And I appreciate this opportunity to talk with uh, all of those listeners you have. Uh, so today we're talking about Skycorp. You've just taken over the reins as the company's CEO. So I'm wondering, can you start us out with a bird's eye view of what the company does and who the primary clients are and who they're expected to be? Right. Well, the uh, the reality, and many people are talking about this more and more. In fact, even the balloon situation that's just taken place is a is a symptom of a deeper underlying condition. And that is <clears throat> space is gonna be the new high ground for economic prominence and prosperity, national security power, as well as <clears throat> the ability to dominate the information domain. And uh, if you want American values to <clears throat> make sure that truth is at the forefront of all information, that national security is peaceful, and that the economy of space uh, it abides by a rule of law that respects every human being and every entrepreneur, then America needs to be the leader in that area. I've been fighting my whole life in the uniform to get America to truly take it seriously. And now that I'm out of uniform, I am joining the front lines in that because all effectiveness in any new domain like space starts with logistics. And what Skycorp has done is invented and space flight tested the capability uh, to do it cheaper than any other company on the planet. And that's why I'm the CEO of the company uh, to help people understand that and then bring in the investors that uh, will basically be the, the big winners in the future if they invest. Yeah, well, so Skycorp was actually founded back in 1998 by Dennis Wingo. And he himself has an amazing reputation over 35 years in the space industry. And so the company has had several missions over the last you know, few years since it was founded, but it's pushing forward now into automated orbital logistics. So is that kind of the timing that's involved with you coming on board as CEO? It is. So Dennis Wingo has been uh, a genius uh, in the sense that everything he has ever built works. And uh, the DOD knows that, the Department of Defense knows that, uh, NASA knows that, other space companies know that, the International Space Station and their national labs know that. And that's why all these people are really excited because Dennis has done something with his inventions that nobody else has been able to do. And he can be first to market if he has the right funding. And that's why I'm joining him because now is the time. And it's not just the, the, the powerful and compelling national security imperative that America has to get its act together in space, uh, but it's also the prosperity where energy from space can transform the globe and deliver energy to people even in sub-Saharan Africa and in Indonesia and Malaysia and places where it's hard to get energy. Uh, so uh, on so many fronts, Skycorp is going to be able to do that. And, and here's the reason it's different, because most people will think, well, yeah, of course, why wouldn't you try to do it cheaper? But let me give you an analogy. Um, right now, just about every space company will build something on Earth and then launch it into space. So it's, it's the satellite. And that satellite can be used for many different purposes. But then when that satellite is either out of fuel or um, out, out of its service life, it, it becomes space junk and it just floats around out there. And it's a real problem. Not only is it a problem because it's uh, a danger to other operations in space, but it's also a problem because it clutters the ability to uh, do things and uh, see things with clarity and accuracy. Um, now, when you build something on the planet, 
and lift it into space. You have to build it, build it almost bulletproof. The resilience of that or the ruggedness of that element uh, has to survive a violent rocket ride to space, which is only seven minutes. And then the satellite is floating in the sanctity of space for 15, 20 years. Uh, the amount of time and money it takes to actually make it that bulletproof so it can survive those seven minutes is extraordinary. And everybody is still kind of trapped in that paradigm. What's, what Dennis Wingo has been able to do is invent uh, the computer on the chip, uh, the hardware, the software, the storage, uh, the communications and the robotics and the thrust in small packages called, you know, essentially elements or modular Lego blocks. So they're high, high technology Lego blocks that are resilient and that they have been proven on the International Space Station to be able to withstand the temperatures and the radiation of space, which is one of the difficult problems of electronics in space. So Dennis has proven that. In fact, we just had the splashdown of all of that technology I just mentioned that was on the International Space Station for the last 10 months, and it was wildly successful. So here we get, have a company now that instead of building and lifting, we can lift the parts into space and then link them together like Lego blocks with robotics, simply and easily. And then we can extend the service life because when you run out of gas, you just plug in a new gas cartridge. When you want an upgrade uh, for more memory or a better communication capability, you just unplug the old and plug it in the new. So what, what would take normally $230 million to build a satellite for low earth orbit, uh, uh, when you build it on earth, it costs that much because you have to make it so rugged. Dennis can launch those parts into space and snap it together. And he can, for what would normally cost 230 million, he can do for 33 million. So it, it lowers the cost. And so it'll be like Dell computers back in the 90s, if you remember. Dell computers figured out a way of doing it cheaper, okay? And when they did it cheaper, everybody bought Dell and uh, it, it transformed the market. And then of course, there's always competition and others got better and uh, got less expensive. But that's the phenomenology that I'm talking about here is that Skycorp can build satellites cheaper and faster because they avoid 90% of the cost and time that it takes to build it so perfectly on earth to withstand that violent ride. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so when I was doing research for this, I found there are a couple of key components to them. One of them is called the star port, I believe. And that seems to be the assembly area where these things are snapped together. The other part is, yeah, I believe it used to be called the OLV. Now it's being called the star craft. And this is, I, I guess people could visualize this almost like a robotic satellite, right? Except that, it, it, I mean, it can be used to assemble and fix satellites, carry them to orbit, retrieve space junk. It can carry external customer payloads. It sounds like there are a variety of things that this can do. And he'll be able to, like, I mean, the, the company will be able to deploy many of these into orbit, depending on customer needs. Could you describe some of the, um, the possible uses for this device? You bet. Well, it, it's almost limitless. It's almost like having the smartphone in space where you can design an app for any uh, work that any human being would need, both in space and for the terrestrial marketplace. Um, and you, so you're exactly right, though. This this technology, these little elements, these little Lego blocks of technology of computation, robotics, communication, thrust, um, can build just about any kind of satellite. And so that uh, factory you were talking about, we call it our star port. And that's kind of like our monster garage in space. Um, and then we have the Starcraft, which is kind of think of it as a satellite uh, satellite robot or the robotic mechanic in space. They can fly around and do anything. So as you throw the parts up there, let's say you're a satellite company. Now you can build a satellite for a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the time by ha having Skycorp just build the parts you need. We throw it up there, assemble it on orbit, and now we can take it out to whatever orbit slot you have. Uh, and then you can uh, have that satellite not only live out its service life, but when it needs to be refueled, upgraded, modernized, recapitalized, we can go out there and plug in, uh, unplug and plug in new components, this modularity uh, to allow it to last longer. And when it's done with its life, um, we can deorbit the thing or bring it back and reuse it 
so that you're not wasting anything. That model does not exist right now. In fact, the uh, Congress and in fact, the international world um, uh, uh, has uh, kind of put down a marker that anybody ha that has any space junk out there in space that's not utilized, and there's a lot of it, as you know, you have to deorbit it within the next five years responsibly. Mm. There's really no way of doing that, and Skycorp will fill that need. So the, the uses are limitless because now when you can build a satellite that cheap, now people don't have to own a satellite to have its benefits. They can do satellite as a service. So you're, you want a uh, telescope where you can look at the stars out in space. I can uh, lease you that uh, capability on the back of my satellite. That's also being used as a robotic um, 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 mechanic, if you will, to fix other satellites, reprovision satellites, build satellites for other customers. But yes, we're starting with the satellite companies out there in uh, geosynchronous orbit because they have satellites that need servicing and we can build them satellites for that those uh, spots that they have, or they call them uh, orbital slots. And if you have a slot, we can build a satellite for you cheaper and faster than anybody else. We can carry it out to that slot and then we can upgrade it whenever you need. Well, and that's an excellent point. So from looking at this, um, because it has a detachable payload, one of the things that interested me was this idea of, okay, if I'm a communications provider, instead of having to put together an entire satellite and test the solar cells, make sure, as you've mentioned, that everything is radiation hardened, and then worry about battery life and worry about replacing parts, it, it seems like I might be able to basically attach it to this backbone. And so the communications provider will only have to worry about a small part of it. It, and then they could put it on a platform, as you've mentioned, it would move it out to orbit and it would serve as kind of the backbone for this satellite, right? So you could actually use these as, as components in a satellite, in a sense. That's right. And that's why there's almost limitless uh, uses. Uh, you know, it's almost uh, unlimited the uh, number of uses. And, uh, and I'll uh, kind of de describe a couple more because we talked about telecommunications. Uh, we talked about... Um, the, uh, the ability to uh, also use it for um, you know, sensors out in space, uh, but it also allows you to build cheaper so that you can build more. And one of the things we really need as a human race and as a nation is kind of this internet in space where people can communicate uh, ubiquitously like we do on planet earth. Uh, and and, and uh, you need satellites to do that, but you could build a uh, basically a space alert system that can be the, the thing that can see and understand an asteroid that might be a city killer or even a planet killer and understand it early enough to do something about it. Right now, we are blind with regard to our ability to see these small asteroids that could kill a city. They hit every once in a while, like the one that hit Russia the other year, but uh, luckily it didn't hit a city. But had it hit a city, it's like a nuclear detonation. We can see those with uh, uh, when satellites are cheap enough, now you can afford to build uh, this alert system or this sensing system. And I'll go back to the balloons. The balloons that we're experiencing now are really a symptom of a deeper underlying condition. And that is in the industrial age, we never designed our sensors uh, to spot anything that could cross our airspace. So we really looked for intercontinental ballistic missiles that might come across or uh, low flying aircraft, but uh, small balloons that are floating at slow speeds, nobody really thought to ever optimize for that. And it was a, a, a critical mistake. But if you try to build all the sensors and all the towers and all the defenses required in this old industrial age model, you'd run out of money before you solve the problem. But space can do it for cheaper because it's a network. And just a few satellites could literally see and understand anything that's moving across in the air at any altitude and understand what it is and actually have time to do something about it. So a balloon doesn't have to just be shot down. It could be used as a tool for diplomacy and statesmanship. It can be used in a way that helps everybody understand truth. Mm. Well, and so let me let me dig down into that just a little bit. If I understand correctly, there have been several balloons from I, I, they're being called Chinese spy balloons that have come uh, during the Biden administration. I believe there were four or 
per potentially more of those during the Trump administration also that just weren't detected and weren't told to the, you know, the, the top of the administration. So what you're saying is that basically in terms of Chinese spy balloons, you could build a top down system that looks down at these and helps secure American airspace from above and it would do it more cost effectively. Absolutely. And it wouldn't just be balloons, uh, you know, the ability to see and detect anything that's moving uh, from space is now feasible. It wasn't necessarily feasible 10 years ago, but with the technology that is off the shelf today, you can build systems that could see and understand anything that moves that is coming across our borders. And that is a cost effective way of protecting America. But you can only do that if your satellites are cheap enough. And right now they're still not cheap enough. Elon Musk is doing a great job of lowering the cost of launch, but the cost of building a satellite is still too expensive because they're doing it this old way where they're building and lifting. Skycorp lifts and builds and it transforms the price tag of a satellite and allows us to do a thousand more things than we can do today because it closes more business cases. Mm. Well, so one of the other aspects of this that was really intriguing to me was this idea that it might take things towards kind of a hub, hub and spoke logistics method. method. And this is something, is something. Uh, that like FedEx and um, UPS and even the U.S. mail tend to do, right? Where So if, if you mail a package via FedEx, they don't take it from your house to the other person's house. They take it to a distribution center. And then it gets bulk moved with thousands of other passages, packages to a destination, and then it gets distributed. And so it seems like in space, you might be able to do something similar where you could move components, you could move payloads, you could move like fuel and supplies, things like that. You could move them up to the starport and then from the starport out to individual satellites a lot more cost effectively. Yes. In fact, uh, in national security, we have a saying that uh, goes uh, the, uh, the following. Um, amateurs talk about um, tactics and techniques and, uh, and weapons. Uh, professionals talk about logistics. You win the competitive environment, both in business and in national security, by having logistics that are cheaper and faster than your competition. And that's what our skyports are, that's what our starports and our starcraft can do. It can be a hub and spoke system where we can, uh, we have these parts and pieces, the elements, if you will, uh, the modularity, and we can stage them in space so that when a satellite needs more fuel, it's only a short drive to get our uh, robotic mechanic or our star craft to carry that fuel out to the satellite, unplug the old cartridge, plug in the new cartridge, and you're off to the races. Or if you wanna upgrade from a one petabyte server to a 10 petabyte server, uh, our uh, starport will have those in stock and, uh, and you can basically say, I want to order one of those and you can take out your old one petabyte server, plug in the 10 petabyte, and then somebody else in space would probably want to buy that one petabyte server and you can plug it in there because the standards are going to be universal. They're going to be international. And as just like when you're, um, uh, you know, when you're changing a tire, you have a metric system that allows you to have a tool that can undo any bolt anywhere on the planet because everybody builds it to the same standard. Mm. Well, so one of the other things that I understand, you mentioned earlier a test that just came back to Earth that went very well. I believe that was for what's called the Intelligent Space Systems Interface or ISSI which is a standardized modular connector for power and bandwidth. And one of the things that excited me was this is also an open source standard that any provider can use, right? So this is introducing a lot of standards into the system that can really solve longstanding problems in terms of compatibility. That's exactly right. And so that that was one piece of the equipment that was tested on the International Space Station. Uh, and that uh, that specific system you're talking about is built by IBOS, which is a German company. And they are uh, wonderful friends of ours. And uh, we, we help them here in America and uh, in Germany. Uh, and that's exactly right. We are connected to the international community so that what we build in space has commonality and standards so that everybody can use it. Everybody can link in, everybody can plug in. And when you have something in space, anybody can help you. Uh, this goes back to even rescuing in space. 
you know, the ability to show up at another place where there might be human beings or there might be some equipment that's in trouble and you can help rescue and, uh, and, and help your friends. So the, it's very powerful what we're doing, but we are literally laying the groundwork for a logistics future in space that has infinite business cases, but it also its profound difference is that it can do it cheaper and faster. So what takes 36 months, if you're somebody that wants a satellite to do something in space, it'll generally, if you have all the money today, ready to go, it'll generally take you about uh, $300 million and about 36 months to get it up there. Um, in the Skycorp model, we can do it in 18 weeks and we can uh, do it for 33 million. So you can see the amazing difference in price and speed. And as Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and others bring down the cost of launch and the rate of launch, the pace of launch, where you can launch multiple rockets every day into space, uh, the entire business uh, market, the entire total addressable market is just going to explode. And it's going to explode to do three things that are important for humanity. And this is the logistics foundation that Skycore is building. One, space can offer unlimited and affordable information to all people on the planet. Two, um, space can provide almost unlimited and affordable um, energy from space to all people on the planet and in the space economy. And third, space can provide almost unlimited and affordable resources from space. For example, there's an asteroid that is closer to Earth than the moon because it's flying in the same orbital track as the Earth. And that is about a day's travel, a day's time travel away. And we already have the robots that can go on to that. And there are five trillion dollars worth of gold, silver, platinum, and other rare earth metals on that very one asteroid. Five trillion. So you can see how uh, spending one day to journey to that asteroid and, and, and robotically mining those resources and then bringing them back to Earth or 3D printing in space structures and capability using that material, whether it's the iron ore or the gold or the silver or the rare earth elements, you can see how powerful manufacturing in space can be. And that's what our sky, our star port can do. It can be the monster garage factory for 3D printing or for anything you want to do in space with the robotic mechanics called the star craft that can buzz around and do the work or go out and pull in a satellite and do work on it for the customer and then send it back out to get its work done. It's just a profound foundational transformation or step change in the marketplace of space to benefit humanity. Absolutely. Well, from looking at the website, um, so I understand that Skycorp is starting in geostationary orbit because that is the most immediately profitable sector to help grow the company. And it, on the website, it said there are currently over 300 satellites out there, over 100 20 billion dollars in bits come and go through that area so uh, i guess what i'm wondering is if, if that's the place where you're starting um how long do you think it may take before you start to move farther out you mentioned asteroids i know nasa is looking at the moon elon musk is looking at mars uh i mean definitely that that geostationary orbit is that's the place with the most commercial activity how long do you think it might take though you know before it goes farther out yeah, so uh, it's it's uh, we are not just starting in geo uh, or mm -hmm. uh, geosynchronous orbit. Uh, the first starcraft will be built in low Earth orbit, and it will build other starcraft in low Earth orbit to do work in low Earth orbit. Uh, we will carry uh, those satellites for customers out to geo uh, when we need to and when we want to, and there's a huge market there. So it doesn't have to start in geo, although that's what we're targeting. That's our beachhead market, if you will, to service and provide uh, geosynchronous orbital uh, satellites that do work for people on Earth. But how quickly we move out, our goal is to move out into cislunar space, uh, to the moon and beyond. And there's no reason we can't do that quickly. As most things in business, it depends on the resources. So for your listeners, if there's anybody out there that really cares about national security and wants to be the first to this high ground of space economically and ahead of China, who is putting billions upon billions of national focus and effort into that race for the high ground of space, if you want to find a way of doing this for lower cost and light on fire the American economy to actually compete in this space, no pun intended, then uh, come to our website and reach out to Skycorp 
Incorporated because we have the space flight certified and proven equipment that we've flown on the International Space Station. And we have the international partners and we have the implementation partnership with the International Space Station National Lab, with NASA and with the Department of Defense. So we have the people, we have the strategy, we have the equipment and we have the partnerships uh, to actually take this to the next level immediately. And the more money we're able to raise, the quicker we will be able to achieve this vision for American economy uh, to help save the planet and help energize and accelerate the space economy. Wonderful. Steve, thank you again so much for your time today. I, I genuinely can't thank you enough, as well as, again, for your remarkable career of service. Let me close by asking, what comes next? Where can we expect to see yourself and Skycorp in the news tomorrow? Well, what I'd like to be able to see is a news story that says Skycorp has been funded uh, by uh, somebody who understands that this is really a life or death journey for the prosperity of America's future. In other words, space is so powerful to deliver information, energy, and resources to everybody on the planet uh, that I believe the first uh, company that is uh, the logistics backbone for this economy will be the first trillion dollar company in the 21st century. So I'm hoping that you will see somebody who is uh, somebody who loves America, is worried about our national security and our prosperity as a nation, and that this is the breakout moment for America to tap into infinite resources, infinite energy, and inf infinite information using space as the high ground. And it protects America's future. It saves America's future for our children and grandchildren. This is the big play of our age, and the Space Force is gonna be a wedge in history that it provides the national security so that the rule of law and all entrepreneurs can actually make good risk decisions on the business cases of space. And Skycorp will be the future construction company of space for the logistical backbone, the hub and spoke of delivering, building, and reprovisioning, meaning resupply, uh, refuel, uh, modernize, and recapitalize the space infrastructure. And when something is no longer needed in space, Skycorp can deorbit that in affordable ways that are responsible and smart because you don't just have to burn it up into space. You can do other incredibly clever things with anything you build in space. Never throw anything away. Skycorp is that logistical backbone. And that's what I hope you'll see in the news tomorrow. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Well, thank you. Have a great day. And thanks for asking the questions.